Hi, I'm Dale. I'm an engineer with the Google Maps Platform Developer Relations team. Today, I'm going to show you how to build an Android Maps app using the Maps Compose library. This will be a workshop based on the code lab called Add a Map to Your Android App with Jetpack Compose. If you'd like to follow along, you can do so using the link in the description. This workshop will cover how to enable and use the Maps Compose library to add a Google Map to an Android app, how to control the viewpoint of the camera programmatically, how to add, customize, and cluster markers, how to draw shapes on the map, and how to use existing non-composable Google Maps libraries with the Compose components. Let's say we wanted to visit all of Colorado's most prominent mountain peaks. There are a lot of them, so we're gonna need an app for that. Along the way, we will use custom styling to visually distinguish the regular, already high mountains from the famous 14ers, which are mountain peaks over 14,000 feet high. So come with me and we'll elevate your maps code to all new heights. First, let's get properly outfitted for this journey. We have a starter project all set up and ready to go. The starter code establishes our architecture, loads the data from the local file, and makes it available via a view model. During this workshop, we'll focus mainly on displaying those locations on a Google map. So let's take a tour of our starter code. I've already cloned the code lab project and imported it into Android Studio. If we run the project, we can see the app with a bottom navigation element to select the kind of marker to show. Right now, each type just shows a loading spinner instead. At a high level, the app consists of a data layer, which loads our set of mountains from a local raw resource, a view model to build the view state for the UI, and a UI which has our Google map and set of markers. Let's start by taking a look at the data layer. Here, we have a custom mountain data class that is specific to this app's use case. This class consists of an ID, a name, the mountain's location, and its height in meters. The mountain's repository loads the list of mountains from a GPX file and creates one mountain instance for each mountain in the input file. The resulting list is exposed as a state flow that can be used in other parts of the app. There is also a meters value class to help us deal with units gracefully. This allows us to enforce and consistently create nicely formatted user messages complete with localized units. In our app, the view state is owned entirely by the view model, so all user events must be sent to the view model to be processed. This is done by the view model's on event method. Our app will handle two kinds of user events, one to zoom to show the full set of markers and the other to toggle between just the 14ers and the full set of peaks. The toggle all peaks function simply toggles the value of the show all mountains mutable state flow. This in turn triggers rebuilding the view state. The main purpose of the view model is maintaining the view state. The view can either be in a loading state if the list of mountains is empty or a mountain list state which consists of a list of mountain objects and a bounding box that contains all of the locations. A new view state is created when either the list of mountains changes or when the user toggles whether to show the full list of mountains. The resulting view state flow is converted to a hot flow tied to the view model scope using the state in function. This means there will always be a view state immediately available to our UI. Now that we've taken a brief tour of the starter code, we are ready to embark on our journey towards our working mountains map app. Let's go. The first step is to visit the Google Cloud console and get an API key with the Google Maps platform APIs and SDKs enabled. As a best practice, restrict your API key to your Android app and your signing key so that no one else can use it. The exact steps for how to get a key and restrict it are linked in the description below. Please follow those instructions and come back here when you're ready to continue. Great, now that you have your API key, let's add it to our project. Remember, it is very important to keep your API key secret. To that end, we will use the Maps Platform Secrets Gradle plugin. Add that as a dependency to your top level build.gradle.kts file. Now we need to configure the secrets plugin by adding the following code to the app level build.gradle.kts file. This code configures the default properties file to be local.defaults.properties, 
which will have a non-functional placeholder that can be checked into source control. Our actual API key will be set in our secrets.properties file. Copy local.defaults.properties to the secrets.properties and set your API key in that file. You will have to switch from the Android view to project files view to do this step. Once complete, switch Android Studio back to the Android view. Note that the .git ignore file in this repository is already configured to ignore the secrets.properties file, but you will need to add this manually for any project you build using your API key and the secrets Gradle plugin. Finally, we'll add the API key to the Android manifest using a metadata tag. Add this exact code as a child of the application tag. This will in turn set the API key for the maps composable. Now that we have completed our API key setup, we can move on to adding the Maps Composable dependencies. We will add dependencies for the main Maps Compose library, the Maps Compose Utils library, and the Maps Compose Widgets library. These dependencies are set in the app level build.gradle.kts file. Also note that the starter project had dependencies on the non-composable version of the Maps SDK and associated Kotlin extension libraries. We will replace those with the composed versions. Before continuing, you should perform a Gradle sync. Now that we have finished the setup steps, we can move on to adding a Google Map Composable to our app. The Mountain Map Composable is a container around our map which isolates the map-specific UI from the surrounding navigation and scaffolding UI code. Let's open the Mountain Map source file and add a Google Map Composable where indicated. Now, let's run our app again. If everything worked, you will see a map centered above the infamous Knoll Island, also known as Latitude Zero and Longitude Zero. Congratulations! If you don't see a map, first check LogCat for any reported issues. It is common to forget to add the API key to the secrets file or have a key without the map's API enabled. It is also common to forget to add the API key to the application tag of the Android manifest. As interesting as Null Island may be, we really would like to focus the map on our data. We do this by controlling the map's camera. Let's create a camera position state that is centered on our marker data and pass that as a parameter to the Google Map Composable. When we now run the app, we'll see it centered on where our markers will go. Next, let's adjust the zoom level to our area of interest. We'll create a zoom all method to center the map on the markers and set the zoom level based on the bounding box containing all of the markers. We'll animate to the desired camera state for a nicer user experience. This requires a coroutine scope so the animation can run without blocking the UI thread. Let's also make our application react to changes in the markers bounding box. We'll use a launched effect to achieve this. Now, whenever the bounding box changes, the camera will update accordingly. But what happens when the user moves around and starts exploring the map? We'd like to provide them with an easy way to return to the same location and zoom level. The Zoom Extents button sends events to the view model, which in turn are emitted to an event flow from which we can collect screen events. This is a great way to decouple parts of our UI. In this case, the zoom button exists in a part of the app that doesn't have access to the camera. Let's use another launched effect to collect those zoom all button clicks and call our zoom all function for each click. Try it now. Run the app and reposition the map and change the zoom level. Now that we can control the camera, let's add some markers to the map to give us something interesting to look at. First, add a content block to the Google Map Composable. This is the block where you can interact with the map. We'll add code for each of our marker types and implement each one at a time. Let's start with basic markers implemented in the basic markers map content. We need to annotate the method as both a composable 
and also a Google Map Composable. Also note that you cannot call non-Maps Composables within Google Map Composable. This is not allowed by the library. Let's loop through our mountains and add a marker for each mountain. Go ahead and try it. You should see a map of Colorado's 14ers. Clicking on a marker will show the mountain's name and elevation. Let's add some style to our markers. First, we'll create a couple of custom icons. The vector to bitmap function does the work of creating the customized bitmap descriptors for us. We'll partition the mountains into 14ers and non-14ers and use a different icon for each. If you run the app, you will still only see the 14ers, but toggling the show all switch in the top app bar will treat you to a list of 143 of Colorado's most prominent peaks. Right now, if you zoom closely into a peak, you will likely see not only our marker, but also the Google Map landscape marker. One way to hide those markers is by disabling this set of markers using the cloud-based styling. Let's add a map ID associated with a map style that hides these map features. Notice the competing landscape markers are now gone, but so are all of the non-competing markers. There has to be a better way. And that better way is to use advanced markers. First, let's implement the advanced markers map content function. Like we did with the basic marker map content, we'll need to annotate it with at Google Map Composable. Then we'll add an advanced marker for each mountain in the list. If you zoom in to one of the markers, you'll notice that there is no competing landscape marker. Advanced markers avoid colliding with other markers. This means if there are markers in the map that would collide with your marker, those other markers will be hidden instead. Let's style our advanced markers using the pin config parameter. We'll create one pig config for 14ers and one for the non-14ers. Each will have a custom icon created using our same vector to bitmap function and a custom color scheme. Our map is starting to look pretty good, but it is also starting to feel crowded with all those 14ers. And this is especially true when we show the full set of mountains. This is where clustering markers really helps us tidy up. To use the clustering composable, we will need to create a collection of mountain cluster items that implement the cluster item interface. Then we'll transform our list of mountains into a list of mountain cluster items. We then provide that as input to the clustering composable. As we zoom in and out, the markers will cluster together, giving our app a much less cluttered screen. Much better. If only decluttering the rest of my life were this easy. Of course, we should really style the clustered markers. Let's define two different color schemes and apply one to the 14ers and the other to the non-14ers. When customizing the markers, we can utilize existing composables. In our case, we'll keep it simple and use an icon composable with a backing circle to ensure it stands out against the map. And there you have it, customized markers that cluster together based on the zoom level and give our map a much neater and tidy look. The Google Map Composable has much more functionality beyond just markers. For example, we can easily draw shapes on the map. Let's add code to outline the state of Colorado. All we need is the list of locations that make up our shape. We'll implement the Colorado Polygon function. Because Colorado's borders are specified in degrees and minutes, we'll use a helper utility to express and convert from degrees, minutes, seconds to decimal degrees. The polygon function makes drawing the shape as easy as taking a hike. But let's be real, outlining Colorado is not a complex task. We got lucky that Colorado is basically a rectangle. But what if you have complex shapes that you need to add to your map? One approach is to use the keyhole markup language, or KML, to describe complex shapes, points of interest, etc. We can then use the existing KML layer function from the Maps SDK for Android Utility Library to read in our KML file and add the resulting layer to the map. This also demonstrates how to make use of MapEffect 
to bridge existing non-composable Google Map functions to Google Map Composable. We've covered a lot of ground in this journey. We've seen how to set up our project to use the Maps Compose library, how to add a Google Maps Composable, how to add and style markers, and how to draw both basic and complex shapes on our map. And that's just the start. There's so much more you can do to customize your Android Maps apps. To explore more advanced features, dive into the Maps Compose library documentation. You'll find great resources and techniques for truly making your maps your own. And for more inspiration and coding examples, be sure to check out the Google Maps Platform YouTube channel. Now, if you'll excuse me, the mountains are calling, and I must go.